Welcome to Whoa. Let's Fly VFR and today we are going to continue in our series of a pilot operation handbook emergency procedures. Today we are going to look at an engine fire. Be back with you in a moment. So grab your coffee and strap in. Let's go flying. Well guys let's have a look at uh, probably one of the most terrifying things I think I could possibly think of is to have a uh, fire in the engine or an electrical fire in the aircraft or even the wing. And the pilot operating handbook for the Cessna 172 actually gives you an idea or gives you directions on what you need to do in the case that that should happen. And we're holding up a whole lot of traffic so what we'll do is we'll get ourselves in the air and once we're up we'll use the autopilot and uh, I'll go through the procedures with you. So let's get it off a little, let's keep it straight. Come on, the uh, center line is our friend. Now I keep having these um, galaxies take off in somewhere where there's not a runway, so I need to relocate one of those. I think they're 80. Oh, too busy talking and not looking, guys. Remember, aviate. Navigate, then communicate is supposed to be the order we do things. That wasn't a very good takeoff, was it? All right, let's uh, get ourselves going. So let's set up our autopilot and give ourselves a bit of rate of climb because we're going to need some altitude to uh, practice this one. 700 a minute will do. We'll head on the heading bug and we'll turn the heading bug around. Now, just a bit of a side note to this is that um, we've got something else we can play with that I've put out in the ocean. So we can take a little cruise past that and uh, we've got something else to play with. So I'll have um, the airport in the air description for you so if you'd like to download uh, William Town and the airbase then you're more than welcome to do that. Um, it's uh, at a point where I don't think I'm going to put too much more here for you because um, it's really chewing up the frame rates at the moment. Mine's not doing so well. Um, so if you've got a stronger system, it'll run fine. But at the moment, yeah, it's, it's beaten my system up a bit. So it's probably got enough uh, items and details there. You can see all the bits and stuff that have been added. This was all nothing when I started. So everything that you see there and around here and things we've flown over are all uh, bits that I've done. I think that's the rifle range, the weapons range. That's what it looks like when you look at their picture. Anyway. So let's, um, let's head out and um, I think we've got enough altitude for the moment and what I'll do is just go through these procedures with you while we're heading out over the sea. We've got 1500 feet up or thereabouts. Right, so let's go through it. Um, really interesting, really interesting. It's really get a bit sidetracked on this. So, uh, fires during start on the ground. Okay, that's the first one it deals with. Ignition switch, start, continue to continue to crank. Okay, so you're going to keep trying to turn the engine, uh, hoping to draw the flames back in because it might be from a, a backfire if you've got a carburetor or something like that. So, um, you can do that. I'm just going to give us a little bit more of a turn. So. It says, if engine starts, power 1800 RPM for a few minutes. Number three is engine shut down and inspect for damage. If engine fails to start, throttle full open, cranking uh, mixture, idle cutoff, cranking continue. So you're trying to get the whatever's remaining fuel, I would imagine, into the engine. Uh, fuel a shut off valve, pull off, auxiliary fuel pump, switch to off, fire extinguisher, activate as you need, wherever the fire is. Uh, engine secure, master switch off, ignition off, park brake, uh, release it says, so I guess you can push it if there's a big fire, and uh, then extinguish the fire as, as required. So that's what happens on the ground. So that's, um, you know, that's not too bad, but let's have a look at the engine fire in flight. There are seven steps essentially dealing directly with the fire. So number one is mixture, idle cut off, Fuel shutoff valve, pull out. Auxiliary fuel pump, switch off. Master switch off. Cabin heat and air off, except overhead vents in brackets. Airspeed 100 knots. If fire is not extinguished, increase glide speed to find an airspeed within airspeed limitations, which will provide 
an incombustible mixture that is too much air for it to actually continue to burn which is possible so you might have to dive pretty quick to do that force landing execute as described in emergency landing without engine power and um, I'll look at that again a little bit further on and we'll run over that when it's closer to time so um, we're going to go up and actually experience one okay we, we know that we can set up all the failures in X-Plane 11 it's uh, fantastic for being able to do that I'm interested to see if we're able to put the fire out though once we have one or whether it'll just continue so we'll give it a try and um, let's just take this I really wanted to show you this I think this is just fantastic um, I downloaded this off the org guys okay so sorry this is a little side 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 trip from um, the fire but we'll get back to that really quickly but love you to have a look at this this is available on the org if you're doing any of your own scenery I think I might have this one parked off Adelaide somewhere as well so if you're um, taking off from Wipad um, have a look around uh, and you might find it out in the ocean as we get closer um, we will get a lot more detail um, it's got people on it there we go it's, it's chimed in we've got aircraft we've got people wandering oh not wandering around but on the air on this on the deck we've got uh, radars spinning we've got all sorts so um, if you fancy come out and um, see if you can land on it I tried in the Cessna I had um, one touch and go and one crash so um, I'm about 50 feet okay welcome everyone back to our situation so back to our scenario we're um, climbing or we're cruising quite happily and very conveniently just around uh, Williamtown Air Base airport and uh, we're about to have a fire so I've got the face track so that I can look around a little bit it seems a little sensitive today maybe there's a little bit more light it is very light sensitive but okay what do we need to do let's first let's have an engine fire let's have that let's see if that starts immediately around a bit it's very peaceful out here that's Raymond Terrace down there I think it might be 6,000 feet all's going well I don't know whether it'll take a little time before uh, it gives us the fault um, in the past when I've practiced a couple of other things and I've hit the buttons it's um, happened nearly immediately so give this a few seconds and see whether it comes up I've just triggered it so I'll maintain the 5,000 feet and if it doesn't happen very soon we'll just go and have a look and make sure it's still set and that's convenient because we can show you guys um, what's what's going on with it all so we might just watch our engine instruments here uh, we've got our probably a little bit too much on the mixture it's probably a little bit too lean and the else is in the green although that's our temps are very high so I think we're going to have a problem very soon you can see that we're well well up on the green here it's gone very hot when it comes to checking your instruments is it nice just a pleasant day up here does sound like the engine is starting to slow down I haven't changed the throttle setting it's still on full so it's um, it's becoming less than happy isn't it and at this point I think you would realize that there was something going wrong with the engine you might try and do something about it we can put the mixture in full rich but we're certainly over temperaturing te over got too much temperature hmm. in tongue tied it's a little it's very hot so we would expect that it's going to um, cease to operate in the very near future and you would be very fortunate to be doing this somewhere near your airport I've still got full throttle and the engine is slowly coming back to um, death's door Let's have a little right turn, 
trying to maintain our altitude. We're already down on stall stalling speed, or down on 60 knots, so it's not looking very good, is it? Well, we might get an engine failure, we may not get an engine fire as, as such. I expected to see lots of smoke and things to happen. Certainly not as yet, so... We certainly have an emergency, so we'd be calling Pan Pan Pan. And you'd be on 121.5, we have 7700 already dialed in. And we're going to make an emergency landing, so what we need to do is we need to turn everything off. So let's do, get rid of that fuel pump off. We need to have our idle mixture out, grab that, pull that out. If we look down, our fuel emergency cutoff. Pull that out, so all the fuel's now stopped. Check our speed. Remember to continue to fly the aeroplane first and foremost. Conscious of where we are, so we'll do a landing from 3-0. We're going to have to make a glide landing. Fortunately, we don't have to do a ditching. Um, and there are procedures for ditching in the ocean as well. We might look at that at some stage. Um, that's interesting. So we'll maintain the 70 knots, which is our best glide speed. And a couple of other things that, um, from my own training, is that you need to be conscious of two particular points in the pattern when you are landing as we are with no engine. And that is uh, a high key and a low key. I'm going to continue to circle because we're still fairly high. The high key is, uh, from memory, about halfway down the, the strip. You need to be at 2,500 feet above the ground level at that point, or airport height. And then when you make your base turn, you want to be 1,500 feet at that point, and I'm just continuing to trim and watch our speed. So I think uh, at this point we're at a good altitude to head in to the pattern, and a radio call to Williamtown, Williamtown traffic, uh, system 172 SP engine failure, 3,000 feet, about two miles from the airport, attempting a power off landing, runway 30. Okay, maintaining our speed. Don't let your speed build. You must maintain that 70 knots, or 68 knots, I think is technically the number that we get. Okay, I'm trying to keep my head reasonably still. Okay, we're about halfway down the strut, which is where we want to be, although we're a little bit high. Okay, we're coming into 2,500 feet, which is good. We're doing a good glide, and I think, um, honestly, we're doing a nice job, uh, pretty much a nice job of that. Maintaining our speed. Okay, we can bring the nose up a little. Check our position. Our position's looking really good. And the good, the good thing about having a little bit too much height, better than not having enough, obviously, but if we have a little bit, we can slip to uh, lose altitude, but maintain our forward speed. Um, if you're not sure how to do that, that is really just um, opposing the controls. You put in right rudder and left aileron, or right aileron and left rudder. It'll cause the aircraft to slip sideways in, in its track and uh, causes a lot more drag, and therefore it... Uh, it increases its descent rate, loses its lift. So you continue to maintain your forward speed, but you uh, you lose height quickly. Okay. I hope this head track's not giving you guys uh, any stomach troubles, guys. It's, uh, it's a little more sensitive. I was flying yesterday, uh, and I was using a light in the evening, and I think the um, sensit sensitivity is a little different. So anyway, we're at a point I think we can turn left base, so, Williamtown Traffic System 172 turning left base for runway 30. And we'll do a gentle turn, just keep it gentle, maintain your speed. I'm not putting any flaps or anything out until we get a little bit closer. Just a very gentle turn. Now, the other steps that we would have, other, other than having turned nearly everything off, we can turn our avionics and everything off now. 
just be conscious that you can't make radio calls if you turn all your avionics and everything off they know where we are we're going to prepare for everything everything's turned off so no battery our lights will be off we've still got these because they're run by air pressure so they not, don't require any power so they'll continue to operate for us okay coming around in okay, case so we turn I'm going to go on to first stage flap that won't work without battery need battery I'll just put one on and I think uh, altitude and we have a very long runway so um, that's not going to be a problem I think we're going to make it fine okay left rudder little left rudder little left aileron turn boy it's twitchy on this face track that's pretty nice as a an approach second stage flap still got a million people waiting for us and my frame rates have uh, dropped right down it's starting to stutter on me so hopefully it'll be reasonably smooth when you watch it guys and a little bit over to the right and looks like we're going to make it back guys with our engine failed maintain it up maintain the nose left rudder to get center line and try and keep it straight and brakes so I made it back down guys with uh, engine failure oh nearly, nearly didn't okay we'll roll off anyway so that uh, someone can come and get us well guys there's uh, engine failure in flight fortunately we didn't have the fire and um, but in some occasions you will some, sometimes it just turns black and billows smoke uh, I've seen that before and I've had a play with it before I consider doing these um, uh, tutorials if you like so thanks for joining us and uh, if you're new to the channel welcome and thank you for sitting with me through the flight uh, feel free to have a look through all the other videos we have on Let's Fly VFR website